Good morning class 9th students. I hope you all are in good trim and ready for today's video lesson. Let me brush up the things. In previous video lesson, we have seen that Portia shares her doubts concerning her future due to strange provisions of her father's will. And what is Portia's father's will? That Portia is to be won by the suitor who chooses the right casket among the caskets made of gold, silver and lead, out of which one casket contains Portia's picture. Nerissa defends Portia's father, saying that he was a wise man. Portia ridicules and is ready to comment on the suitors when Nerissa calls out their names one by one. In previous video, we have already learnt Portia's comments for Neapolitan Prince and County Palatine. Let's see what does she tell about the next suitor, the French Lord Monsieur Liban. Let me read Narissa's dialogue. How say you by the French Lord Monsieur Liban? You can understand this dialogue. Let me read Portia's dialogue. Portia's dialogue. God made him and therefore let him pass for a man. In truth, I know it is a sin to be a mocker, but he, why he hath a horse better than the Neapolitans, a better bad habit of frowning than the Count Palatine, he is every man in no man. If a trocial sing, he falls straight, a capering, he will fence with his own shadow. If I should marry him, I should marry twenty husbands. If he would despise me, I would forgive him. For if he love me to madness, I shall never requite him. In this para, Portia says that the Count Palatine and the French Lord Liban shared the common characteristic of frowning. As God created him, so she thinks he counts as a man. She knows it is a sin to mock at someone like this, but he deserves it. She also says that the French lord is more attached to his horse than the Neapolitan prince. If he hears a trotrel, trotrel mean a bird singing, he starts jumping immediately. Further, if he does not have anybody to fence with. To fence with means draw his sword. So, if he does not have anybody to fence with, he will take his own shadow as adversary. He is every man in no man. It means that he has every man's characteristic but no personality of his own. Later, Portia says that it would be as if she were married to 20 husbands, as he is never one man but 20 men by turns. If he were to despise her, she would forgive him. But if he would love her madly, she would never return his love. The next suitor is Falcon Bridge the young baron of England. Baron means a man of high social rank, a noble man. Nerissa says, What say you then to Falcon Bridge, the young baron of England? Let us see how does Portia responds. Portia's dialogue, You know I say nothing to him, for he understands not me, nor I him. He hath neither Latin, French nor Italian and you will come into the court and swear that I have a poor penny worth in English. He is a poor man's picture but alas who can converse with a dumb show. How oddly he suited. I think he bought his doublet in Italy, his round hose in France, his bonnet in Germany and his behavior everywhere. Here Portia finds it difficult to converse with him as he did not know Latin, French or Italian and Portia's knowledge of English was very poor. 
he is a proper man's picture it means he is handsome and fine looking in this dialogue dumshur refers to a play in which all character acts without speaking that is by gesture the baron is described as a dumb show because he is unable to speak foreign languages and had to converse by means of signs as in a dumb show porcia describes baron's external appearance as odd and strange he is oddly dressed and very odd in behavior too he wears an italian jacket and breeches in the french fashion he seems to have got his hat from germany and his manners from everywhere actually english men of shakespeare's days had fondness for the manners and clothes of foreigners is this clear to you the next suitor is scottish lord nerissa's dialogue what think you of this scottish lord he is neighbor pushia's dialogue that he had a neighborly charity in him for he borrowed a box of the ear of the englishman and swore he would pay him again when he was able i think the french man became his surety and sealed under for another here porcia says that he has love for his neighbor because he received a blow on his face from the english man and swore that he would return it when he was able to do so porcia thinks that the french man guaranteed the scottish lord would repay his debt and signed his name underneath the scotman's signature on the bond as a guarantee for a friend let me brief it again actually the scottish lord is not impressive porcia speaks about his cowardice in a sarcastic way by calling him kind hearted as he did not return the englishman's blow immediately The description of the Scottish lord is a reference to the frequent alliances between the Scots and the French against England when Scotland was at war with England. Nerissa's next dialogue. How like you, the young German, the Duke of Saxony's nephew. Here Nerissa asks Portia How do you like the young German the duke of Saxony's nephew Let's see what does Portia say Portia style look very wildly in the morning when he is sober and most wildly in the afternoon when he is drunk when he is best he is a little worse than a man and when he is worst he is little better than a beast and the worst fall that ever fell i hope i shall make shift to go without him pushya says that he is terrible in the morning when he is sober but worst in the afternoon when he is drunk when at his best he is worse than a man and when he is at his worst he is not better than a beast if the worst thing that could happen should happen she will not accept him in the next dialogue we find nerissa raised her doubt to portia nerissa's dialogue if he should offer to choose and choose the right casket you should refuse to perform your father's will if you should refuse to accept him let us see how does portia responds Portia's dialogue. Therefore, for fear of the worst, I pray thee, set a deep glass of Rhenish wine on the contrary casket. For if the devil be within and that temptation without, I know he will choose it. I will do anything, Nerissa, ere I will be married to a sponge. Here we find Portia instructs Nerissa to place a tall goblet. 
of Rhenish wine on the wrong casket to prevent the young German from choosing the right casket. Portia was sure that the German suitor will not be able to resist the temptation of his national drink even if the picture of the devil himself was within. She also used a sponge for the German man because a sponge constantly absorbs water. Similarly, a drunkard who constantly takes liquor is called a sponge. Since the young German is a drunkard, Portia calls him a sponge. Now the next one is Nerissa's dialogue. You need not fear, lady, the having any of these lords. They have acquainted me with their determinations, which is indeed to return to their home and to trouble you with no more suit, unless you may be won by some other shot than your father's imposition, depending on the casket. In this dialogue, we find Nerissa's concern for Portia comes forth in her speech as she tries to soothe Portia's troubled mind due to her unworthy suitors. She tells Portia to set aside her fears concerning the suitors. She says that they have informed her of their decision to go back home and not to press their courtship further unless Portia's father's trickery concerning the caskets can be set aside and they may woo her in an ordinary way. Let's see how despairingly Portia responses to Nerissa's dialogue. Portia's dialogue If I live to be as old as Sibylla, I will die as chaste as Dinah unless I be obtained by the manner of my father's will. I am glad this parcel of wooers are so reasonable, for there is not one among them, but I dote on his very absence, and I pray God grant them a fair departure. Before I continue explanation of this dialogue, let me explain the allusion Sibylla and Dinah. Actually, in Roman mythology, Sibylla was a prophetess. She was granted a wish by goddess Apollo <clears throat> that she would live for as many years as the grains of sand she held in her hand. She was the ageless old woman. Dinah was the goddess of moon and hunting. She is known as the virgin goddess. Then what do you understand by a uh, parcel of words. Parcel of words means crowd of suitors. Now, let me explain why does uh, Portia refer Sibylla and Dinah here. Actually, they are referred to here to explain Portia's resolve to remain a virgin like Dinah. Even if she lives to be as old as Sibyl of Cumi, unless she is won in marriage by some suitors in the lottery of casket. I hope you have understood it well. Uh, for today's lesson, this much is enough. The remaining uh, scene we will continue in next video lesson. I have uploaded text pics and also few questions that you have to write down the answer in your literature fair copy. Till then, take care and have a nice time.